Hi, second grade, welcome back. So right now we are working on our collage. A collage? For our collage, we are inspired by the environment. So what could we call a piece of art that is about land and doesn't have a whole lot of people? What do we call that word? I hope someone said landscape. We took a look at some pictures of the land and we noticed something interesting about the mountains. What do we call the way mountains seem to disappear in the distance, but seem a lot darker and clearer in front of us. I hope someone said atmospheric perspective. We noticed that when things are off in the distance, they become a little bit blurrier and they also become a little bit lighter. That is because of the hydrogen or the water in the air making it look that way. We needed to talk about three different things, our foreground, middle ground, and background. Foreground is everything that's in front of you, things that you can see, things the size of your shoe. Middle ground could be large pieces of land that start to get smaller in the distance. And then the background is anything basically in the back. So it could be the sky or it could be those mountains really far back there. We are also inspired by nighttime and how when you're out in the middle of nowhere, you don't have a whole lot of light pollution, which makes it so much easier to see the stars. For this project, we might also consider putting a moon, so be thinking about how you might want to do that later on. Last time we took a look at deserts, and that was what we talked about first. We're going to talk about another biome. A biome is a type of land, so a desert is its own biome because we can classify it. We know that deserts have a lot of sand and they're very hot. Let's take a look at a very different biome. Let's go ahead and take a look at this for about five seconds. You can put on your Investigator goggles if you want. I'm gonna count one, two, three, four, five. Could anyone raise their hand and tell us what this biome is called? I hope that someone said tundra. The tundra is the coldest of all the biomes. You'll find tundras in the northern parts of the earth. So at the parts where it's really cold, like our axis. There's long summer days and then short periods of sunlight. There's very little rainfall. And there's a layer underneath the topsoil that is permanently frozen. So it's really hard for plants or trees to grow. So you won't see a whole lot of those. You'll just see a lot of mountains. And then the soil's not very fertile. You won't see a whole lot of insects either, but you'll see a lot of weasels, foxes, owls, and even reindeer. One thing that is very interesting about the tundra is that something very amazing happens in the sky at night. Does anyone want to raise their hand and take a guess at what this is called? This is called Aurora Borealis, or you can just call it Northern Lights. It's something special that happens in areas where it's really cold and has to do with the ions in the air changing the color of the sky. Seeing this must be a really beautiful sight, and it's something that we will have a chance to include in either your desert or your tundra landscape today. So you could either do desert or tundra for your landscape. You'll get a little bit of choice, but you'll need to only choose one, so be ready to choose today. Today, what we will do is I will dismiss tables to either choose desert or tundra. So it's up to you what you want to do. Go ahead and turn and talk to a neighbor. For a few seconds, I want you to tell them what you're thinking. Do you want to do a desert or tundra? You don't get to do both. You have about 10 seconds. Go. Awesome. So if you're picking desert today, you will walk around the green arrow. Sorry, it's not focusing, guys. And then you will pick up one of each of these warm colors. I decided I'm going to do the desert today, but you could choose the tundra. If you do, you would choose one of these three colors, or one of each of these three colors. You'll have all three, and then you will take them back to your seat. So remember, tundra and desert. Go ahead and show me fancy fingers, and I will dismiss tables to go pick either desert or tundra. Awesome. So for my first example, I did a tundra. I kind of like it, but I want to try something new. So I'm going to try the desert. If you chose the tundra, that's okay too. The directions are the same, but it gives you a little bit of choice. What we're doing is we are making the landscape. Remember, we noticed that things in the background are lighter. And then as they get lower or closer to us, they get a little bit darker. So what you will want to do 
whether you have the desert or the tundra, is you want to order them in that order. So if you notice, the biggest one, that's gonna be your light one, put that down, then take your medium, whether it be blue or the orangish brown, orangish brown, and then place your darkest color just like this. It should be a little gradient like this, a little, little light to dark action going on. Give me a thumbs up once you have them ordered correctly. Thank you. All right, now that you have them ordered, take the first two off and all you should see in front of you is the big, big, big long one and your stars. Go ahead and get those two in front of you and then give me a thumbs up to show me that you're ready. Awesome. Now what I want you to do, watch carefully. I know my hands are a little dirty because I was painting, but what you're gonna do is you're gonna find the tip top of that left side corner, take it, rip it a little bit. Now I want you to notice, your ripping is not going perfect. You don't want it perfect. So let me, here, let me zoom out a little bit. I can only do this with one hand. It's gonna be really hard. All right, so I'm gonna have to put the hammer here actually. But basically you are tearing. It doesn't matter where it goes, but try to keep it high up on the paper. You don't wanna tear down real low. If something happens like this, where it kinda went off the paper and I have to start again, that's okay too. Just keep on tearing. Now don't tear too much. Tear something like this. Now remember, if you tear crazy mountains like this, that's okay. We actually want that. That's what's gonna make it look real. So once you have that torn, give me a thumbs up. Awesome. So now what we're gonna do, we're gonna do this together, is we are going to flip it over. I want you to put a little bit of glue, not a whole lot, just take it quickly do some crazy lines with it. Normally we do dots, but this one, it'll need a little bit more than a few dots. Then you gotta flip it back over, align it to the edges of the paper. Let me see if I can get it on camera. To the edge of the paper, you can go over your name. If you did put your name, I do want you to go over it and go ahead and put it down. Give it some nice pressure. We usually hold for 10 seconds, so count with me. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. All right, so it should be glued down. Give me a thumbs up once you have your first layer glued down like this. Now for this next part, I just want you to watch because I think you can do it by yourself, but I want you to see how I do it. You're gonna do the same thing with the next piece of paper. Now, this is critical. Make sure that the next piece of paper is not the darkest one. The darkest one is the very last one. So put that darkest one to the side. You don't wanna to touch it right now. You only want the medium color. So it's either the medium blue or the medium brown. You're gonna do the same thing. Start from the top. Do twisty crazy lines all the way down. It does not need to be perfect, nor do I want it to be perfect. So please don't make it perfect. There's no way to do that. Then of course you're going to flip it over and then add a touch of glue. Remember, you need to open the glue, maybe give it a little shake, perhaps, and then you'll add some glue to it. Not a whole lot, but more than a dot, for sure. Flip it over. Be very neat with this step. You make sure that your corners align perfectly, and then give it a little bit of pressure. Give it some pressure, 10 seconds, and then you will move on to the next step. Now, remember, you're watching me this time. You're gonna go to the dark paper, and you are going to tear, tear very carefully. Remember, it does not have to be perfect, nor do I want it to be perfect. Oh, looky here, I went a little bit too close to the edge. Now I'm going to try to rip it back and finish. Okay, done with the accents for now. Now I have my piece of paper. I'm going to give it a little bit of glue, just wherever I think it needs it, not too, too much. You don't want to glue a monster on your hands. And then flip it over. Align it to the corners, like so. All right, so now we have everything glued down. I'm gonna give you your next step. Please do not color the sky or put anything up there. Next time, we may have some time to use chalk, which will create our aurora borealis. We also may have time to do a moon at the very end of this project, so please do not add anything up here. So on the middle table, you should find some Sharpies. Remember, we're not using Big Bertha. Big Bertha is for third graders. You're gonna use uh, Fine Freddy. So say, hi, Fine Freddy. 
Awesome. Now, if you are doing a desert, you may want to do what kind of plant? You might want to do some cacti, some cactuses. So I'm going to draw with the Sharpie. It's nighttime, so we don't really need any color. It's just going to be the silhouette. I usually draw a little cylinder like this, and then I give it some arms as if the cactus was saying hello, 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 hello. You could draw some rocks. You could draw maybe more lines to indicate maybe there's some valleys. Maybe there is a, I don't know, a wolf that is going hoo. All right, it is up to you how you want to add some details to this. I do want this to be filled with some different pictures. Now, on my tundra, I was silly and I did some cacti. Now, cacti do not grow out in the snow. You could do some Christmas style trees or you could do pine trees. Maybe there's a snowman out there. I don't know. It's kind of up to you. So if you did a tundra, think of things that you might find where it's cold. You might find a log cabin. Or if you want to do your own thing here, that's cool too. Maybe there's a car driving down the road. Maybe there is a road that's coming out of the corner and there's some little lines to show you that it's kind of coming towards us. It's totally up to you how you want to be creative with this. Remember, once you're done, I would like you to come and show me. I want to make sure that your name is on it somewhere. But if you put your name on the star part, please try to cover that up. So I hope that we have a great day today, guys. It'll be a lot of fun. And I'm so excited for the next part when we get to add our Aurora Borealis, which will be so cool. I forgot to mention that you may color. If you're going to color, please do not use anything but the Sharpie or the crayons because I don't actually need you to color. You don't have to color anything for this project. However, if you want to, you may. I decided that I wanted my roads to show up a little bit more bright. I didn't want them to kind of blend in. I kind of wanted them to pop. So I decided to color them in with a white crayon. But I don't need you to color. You don't have to color. Don't feel like you have to. Alrighty, guys. Like I said before, I hope you have a great day. And I'm excited to see these when they are done.